This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Welcome and thank you for joining Sister Power. Sister Power's vision is that women everywhere will learn to live as sisters, to respect each other's differences, to heal each other's wounds, to promote each other's progress, and to benefit from each other's knowledge. This afternoon, our Sister Power VIP guest is the lovely Robin Sherrod. Robin is an ordained and licensed evangelist. She is a founder of Empower to Prosper. Empower to Prosper purpose is to educate, empower, and inspire others to fulfill their destiny. This accomplished through coaching, facilitation, training, and inspirational, motivational speaking. Empower to Prosper provides professional training and group coaching to corporate, nonprofit, and faith-based entities. Clients have included Department of the Army and Navy, Army Chaplain Programs, and United States Veterans Initiative in Honolulu, Hawaii. She has currently recently launched the Think Pink Love Your Life campaign as a means to bring further awareness to the importance of breast cancer and women wellness screenings, as well as being a survivor herself. <laughs> Welcome, Robin. Well, thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much for having me on Sister Power. I am just thankful to be able to come and to share and to be on such a wonderful platform, encouraging and empowering women. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, I am retired military. I am retired Army of 22 years. Wow. I've been able to travel across the globe and to do many great and wonderful things. Um, I'm also, as you mentioned, an ordained and licensed evangelist, and I am an empowerment coach. People ask me, what's the difference between an empowerment coach and a life coach? Um, life coaching is wonderful, and, and they're great um, uh, pioneers in the field of life coaching, but my calling, I feel, as an empowerment coach is to work with someone and to find out what they already have nested on the inside of them and to just give them some tools to be able to bring that out. And so that's what I do. If I can um, give an example. Please do. Okay. An example, I was working with a, a young lady and um, we were um, discussing some things in a forum. And I asked her, I said, well, do you have a card or do you have um, an electronic means of providing me your information? And she said, well, no, I don't have a card. And I said, well, why not? And she said, because I'm currently working in this one position and I may be moving to another position. So I figured I shouldn't make any cards. I said, you missed my point. My point was not where you worked. I didn't want a card based on where you worked. I want a card based on what you do. Ooh. And then she stopped and she just looked at me and she said, um, can we talk further? I said, sure. So I met with her and I just began to explore with her um, the gifts and talents that already lie within her and to help her to be able to bring those gifts and talents forward. And not to make a card based on a company that you work for, but make a card based on who you are as an individual. And so she felt very empowered just by that little interaction that we had together. And it helped her to be able to move forward in what she really wanted to do, but she was stuck at one particular point. So that's just a, one example of what I can do for uh, my clients and for people that I meet in terms of empowerment coaching. Well, I'm glad we brought that out because I think we, I, overlook to give our wonderful uh, title of this episode, Attitude, Gratitude, um, is part of it. Yes. But again, tell us our title, Attitude of Gratitude, um, the power that lies within us. Yes, yes. That's our, that's our t title for this episode episode. Mm -hmm. And what I like what you brought out, that you were immediately empowering this woman and you were motivating her and educating on how she can move forward with her life. Yes. So that's your calling for right now. Yes. 
Well, one of your callings. One of the callings, yeah. Great. Well, we're eager to hear more about Think Pink, Love Your Life campaign. Please share when and why you started this organization. Okay, I started it. It was based off of October of 2015. Um, things in my life changed um, drastically. I had went to a doctor's appointment, and on my way out the door, the doctor um, spoke to me, and she said, when was the last time you had a mammogram? And I said, oh, in July of this past year. This was October, mind you, of 2015. She said, well, let's just do another one. And I did not go in to the office for that. But I said, well, it's not even six months yet. Do I need to have another mammogram? And she said, yes, let's just go ahead and, and have it completed. And so I did, mm -hmm. and um, I found out that I was diagnosed with triple negative uh, breast cancer. I did not have a lump. I had no physical symptoms whatsoever. Um, based on the fact that I have very dense breast tissue, it was hiding itself. Triple negative. negative. Triple negative breast Break cancer. Break that down to us. Well, triple negative breast cancer is where there is no targeted hormonal treatments for it. So you have to go through the whole gamut of chemotherapy. And so it kills, this particular type of chemo will of course kill off every cell in your body. Um, so I experienced a hair loss, I experienced um, my, my nails turning um, extremely dark. Um, every area of my body where I had nail, my, my feet included, turned dark. Um, there was just many things that happened in that, in the progress of time. And so I had to have, because of the aggressiveness of the illness, I had to have chemotherapy first. And then I had the operation. And because of the um, propensity for a return and a more aggressive return, then I elected to have a bilateral mastectomy. So I had that done and completed. And during that time period, when I was in the hospital doing my recovery is when Think Pink, Love Your Life was brought to me in the hospital room at that particular time. And it's to raise awareness for women to take the time. We take so much time with other um, things in our lives. You know, we take time for our children, our spouses, our work, and oftentimes we put ourselves on the back burner. So Think Pink is just raising awareness for women to make sure you get your wellness checks because the best protection oftentimes is early detection, which was in my case. If I had you know, waited six months, my outcome would have been very different. So that's how Think Pink Love Your Life uh, came about. And look at you now. Yes. God is good. Yes, he is. Oh my goodness, what a story. Yeah. And I'd love the, your title, Empowered to Prosper. What is your mission statement? Well, my mission statement, as you shared, is to educate um, to inspire and to encourage um, men and women to live um, life um, and fulfill their destiny and to enlarge their position in life, not to see life as a box to be lived, you know, go to work every day, do A, B, C, and D. But you have gifts. Each one of us have wonderful gifts and talents that's nestled on the inside of us. And those gifts and talents are there so that we can share them with the world. And so that's what Empower to Prosper is about. And so we do it again in different forms, in different ways to, to bring about that awareness and to, to bring about that education. That's wonderful. You know, one of the things, uh, three words that my mother instilled to me at a very young age is appreciation, gratitude, and attitude. Talk a little bit about the power of gratitude. The power of gratitude, um, Sharon, it began to really resonate with me. Um, as I mentioned about the um, breast cancer diagnosis and then the surgery, I had to have a subsequent surgery after that. And um, the surgery was scheduled to be about eight hours in length. Had done all of the pre-checks, everything was, you know, thumbs up, excellent care of doctors and staff. Um, however, the surgery had some major complications, and I ended up being on the, um, in the surgical procedure for 24 hours, for 24 hours. It went from, eight the physicians hours. told you eight hours. Eight hours. And it went to 24 hours, 24 entire hours. day. How many, 
20. was on the staff, the physicians, how many physicians were? In that particular, my understanding in the room at that particular time, I had about four, about four um, doctors that were, that was there, you know, during the, the time of the surgery. And um, again, major compl complications that happened, microscopic surgery, and it took 24 hours for them to bring me out initially. Um, when I came out of the surgery, I was in the recovery room, and they discovered that I had a blood clot. So they had to take me back in for an additional four hours of surgery. And that's when things went drastically wrong. I actually died on the table, and they had to bring me back. My kidneys failed, my liver failed, um, everything. I was gone. And during that time period, I had an experience with God. And people asked me the question, um, were you able to see your body um, you know, um, looking from above, and I said, no, I was so far, it was so many more dimensions above that that I experienced for myself. And um, a few things very quickly of what I learned through that experience is that sometimes we get so caught up in, you know, making sure we cross every T and dot every I. But during my experience, um, what was shared with me, um, with my time, you know, away with the Lord, that he really looks at um, a few things. One of them is our love. Mm. How do we love? First of all, how do we love him? And then how do we love our brother and our sister? And how do we love mankind? Secondly was our stewardship. What are we doing with the resources that he has given us? How are we honoring him in that? And then our gifts and our talents. You know, the, the gifts that he has given unto us. Because he said, you know, I ascended, but I gave gifts unto man. I gave gifts unto woman. And what are we doing with those gifts? What are we doing with those talents? And like the gift that you have, the gift to bring women together, the, with, the gift to empower women, to have this platform is just a wonderful. And so those were the things during my transition. I could hear, I could see, I could feel, but I did not have a bodily form. So I could see my son, what my life would, what their life would be like without me. I could see uh, people that I loved um, during this transition time. And I was so ready to go. I was so ready to say, okay, it was so peaceful at a point. I was like, I'm so ready to leave here and, and go, you know, on to the other side. And an angelic being came and said, no, you must go back. Because if you go through those doors, you're going to see God's glory. And no man has seen my glory and lived to tell about it. So you must go back and you must share your experience. Now, there are going to be some that's going to believe you. There's going to be some that's going to doubt. There's going to be some that are not going to believe. But that's not for your concern. Your concern is to go and to spread the message and to let others know that there is life after this life. So let's live as such. You know, and I am so touched. I, I want Ray to bring up a clip about um, suggestions for increasing gratitude in your life. And mm -hmm. go through this with us. This is such an amazing story that you're sharing with us. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, sure. So um, when we look at um, having an attitude of gratitude. There's a quote that I really, has really resonated with me, and it's called, um, the quote is, gratitude is vitamin for the soul. Mm. Um, this is by Emmanuel Dagger. And it resonates with me because when we look at, of course, vitamin, our bodies and our makeup, you know, vitamins are essential nutrients that we have within our bodies. And how gratitude is an essential uh, nutrient for the soul, mm. but it's fueled by our attitude. It is fueled by our attitude. And so sometimes like with, um, with our bodies, we have to have supplements. We get a vitamin supplement that we take to enhance what's already there. So that's what gratitude is. Gratitude is already inside of us, but sometimes it just needs to be enhanced. It needs to be brought forward. Regardless of the situation that you find yourself in, am I saying that we ignore those bad situations and bad circumstances that we have? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But gratitude gives us the strength to be able to cope with it. Mm -hmm. Just another example, when I was in the hospital, 24-hour um, surgery, um, 
when I, I was in a coma for 12 days. When I came out of the coma, I was only able to move my eyes and my index finger. I was totally paralyzed. I was totally paralyzed. Those were, I could not swallow on my own. I could not speak. Uh, my short-term memory had been affected. And of course, I could not move. And during those times when um, rehabilitation therapy would come in, occupational therapy, they would come in and try to work with me, I found myself that when I was you know, not at my best, I didn't have a good day. Although they were working with me, they would lift my arms, they would do things, but my mind was like, is this the way my life is going to be? Is this my new normal that I, that I will be you know, paralyzed or you know, um, I won't have my, my, my capacity to think anymore. And then when I shifted my focus to being grateful for the fact that I could breathe, the fact that I could see, the fact that I could move my little pinky finger, when I began to think about the positive and those great things that, you know, just do that, then I began to tell my finger, my, my, my second finger, I want you to move. I, you will move. You will move. I visualize myself walking. I, I visualize myself talking. I visualize not being fed because my, my, my mother was there and she had to feed me. And my friend was also there, a very good friend of mine. And she also had to feed me as well. So I visualize myself holding my spoon and holding my fork. And, and, and as I began to do that and press through, I began to start feeling um, motions, you know, in my body. It took many, it took months for me to get back to um, full capacity. And I still have on my left side, um, I still have an area on my body that um, I have no feeling. This is an amazing story. And mm -hmm. if people don't believe in miracles, stay tuned. We're <laughs> going to take a short break and we're going to come back to this wonderful story of gratitude. My this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I had no Greetings, clue. I'm Stephen Philip Katz, the longtime host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii. And Think Tech is important to me because without Think Tech, I never would have had a chance to realize my dream of having a show of talking with other therapists, finding out what they're doing and sharing it with the world at large. Now, for the first time ever, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech will run only during the month of November, and you can help. Please donate what you can so that Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and I look forward to yours. Please send in your tax deductible contribution by going to this website, www.thanksforthinktech.causevox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by ThinkTech, Hawaii's 30 plus weekly shows, thank you for your generosity. Welcome back to Sister Power with our VIP guest, Robin Sherrard. And tell us again, you've had, you have such an amazing story to share. And the title of our episode? It's Attitude of Gratitude, the power that lies within. You know, again, people ask me, they say, how was it, how is it that you were able to maintain your strength through everything, through all the adversity and the trials and the tribulations? And I share with them, first of all, it's my faith in God. Mm. It is my faith in God for knowing that he is a very present help in the time of trouble. And then also my attitude, of which he has given to each and every one of us. And it depends upon us as to what we do with that. But when I start to see the positive changes 
um, with my attitude in terms of my healing mm -hmm. and my recovery because I was still paralyzed. I still couldn't move, but, my, but I was able to shift my attitude. So I still had power. And so, you know, for whoever that's going through something right now, and, and you may seem like and it may feel like that your world is just falling apart, you have no control over anything, you do have control. You have control of how you handle what is being tossed or what is being thrown or what is being put before you. You do have that power and having that attitude of gratitude, which is that power that lies within. You're getting us ready for uh, 2018, you know. I think these are wonderful tools that you're sharing with us. And part of what coaches do is ask questions that expand deepen, reveal, and shift. Give us some examples that would jumpstart our life for 2018. Okay, great. Thank you for asking that question, Sharon. You know, in November, of course, um, many celebrate it as the month of Thanksgiving, um, but Thanksgiving is not about a day. It's about a lifestyle. Mm. It's about a health style. Because when we change the way we think, how we think, we change it to something more positive, then again, it has physical effects upon us. Our immune systems, it is more generated. We have more in, um, st uh, stamina and endurance. But to continue to um, answer your question in terms of attitude and gratitude and some practical applications, uh, one of the things that I, I would sh like to share is to having a gratitude journal. A gratitude journal is, you know, it does not necessarily have to be something that's hard copy, but for those that would like to have something hard copy, you can. For those that are very tech savvy, if you want to um, have this journal on your phone, you can. Mm -hmm. There are different apps and downloads that you can do. But uh, one of the exercises is called Hunt for the Good Stuff. And this is through um, Martin Seligman, who is the father, if you will, of positive psychology. And I was trained um, in this area of resiliency. And one of the uh, modules and one of the teachings is referring to Hunt for the Good Stuff. So Hunt for the Good Stuff is when you actually stop and take a moment and think about your day and jot down three things that happened that was positive for mm -hmm. your day. Whether it's I woke up this morning or I had my favorite cup of coffee, my coffee was good this morning, or that nice little muffin or you know bagel or whatever was great today all the way to I had a wonderful brief and I did great, you know, I got five stars on it, whatever that may be, there's no limit. So take the limits off of mm. it and just write down three things every day if you can and reflect upon that and then go back and take a look at it. And if you get those down points and down times in your life, which we do sometimes, sometimes we have, you know, the, the, the mountain high experiences and sometimes we have those little valley low experiences. So having that gratitude journal and taking that out and pulling it and then look at, looking at it will counter the negativity bias. Negativity bias is that the first place we often go to is the negative. And when we um, hunt for the good stuff, when we journal, when we write those things down, then we're building that optimism. We're building, we're seeing the glasses have uh, full. We're seeing the glasses have full instead of it being, you know, empty. Sure. Well, you've answered my next question. Mm -hmm. uh, people may ask, why is gratitude so important? And so we'll move on to the next phase. And it's all about showing up. Mm -hmm. I hear that right often. It's all about showing up. Absolutely. That's when the magic happens. The power is in the asking. How do you train and counsel people to ask for what they want? You know, that's, you would think in, in, um, that it would be easy for people to really ask for what they want. Um, but they do, they find it, find it hard to do. Yeah. So, so one of the tools, especially women, exactly, especially women, yes. especially women. Uh, now we don't have a problem telling our children, you know, what to do, you know, go do this, go do that or whatever. But when it comes to term and being assertive, you know, sometimes in that regard, but when it comes down to asking for what we want. So I asked the question, I said, do you feel that you're worth it? Ooh. Are you worth it? Are you worth it? So it's about knowing your self worth. It's about knowing your self worth. But also I find sometimes that 
some of my um, clients and people that I interact with, they don't see themselves as being worthy. So I have to start there. I have to start with them saying positive affirmations about themselves and, and what, what, they, what they desire and what they want. And then I have them to speak it forth. Okay, and I have them to look at themselves in the mirror and I have them to speak it forth. And then I also have them ask them about their faith base. If, if they're faith based, then I want them to pray about it. I want them to ask God to give them the strength and the wisdom to be able to ask and not look at it as anything being selfish, but look at it as that, you know, this is, I'm worth this. I'm important. Well, this definitely, this sister power is going to need a part two and a part three. And we're just almost out of time. Okay. But Robin, I read... You are currently pursuing your doctorate degree in pastoral community counseling with Argosy University. Yes. Sisters in Par in Hawaii would like to donate a scholarship to Argosy University in the amount of $5,000. Oh my goodness. Thank Absolutely. you. Oh my this goodness. is for you. Thank At, you. I wish it was oh. more. <laughs> Thank you. You are no. so very welcome, and thank you so much for coming in and empowering us. And I want to thank the audience for your time and spending part of your time with us. Oceans of Aloha, peace and love.